Miracles come while we in the fight. Don't give up and hold him tight. You have a visible battle scar, but never forget who you are and fight, fight, fight. Hello, and welcome to Embracing the Fight. I am Erica Lamar, your digital creator and host. Embracing the Fight was created to help normalize the conversation surrounding physical and mental health issues and concerns. In season one, which started in January of 2023, I talk about my journey through thyroid cancer to help open the conversation because let's face it, when people talk about physical and mental health issues and concerns, they don't want to be looked at strangely. So they keep those things close to themselves and they don't share and they suffer in silence. So I, I agreed to make my life an open book so that others can feel it's okay to talk about these things to help people who are going through what they're going through to heal. Now, before we get into today's episode, I'm asking that you take a moment to subscribe, click like, click share, and comment on this episode on YouTube. Also, if you are listening to the podcast, please subscribe wherever you're listening because Libsyn has several different uh, outlets, but the main outlets that we have is Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts. So please take a moment to either share the episode or make sure that you, you subscribe to those channels. So whenever there's a new episode, you're the first to know. So this week's episode doesn't include a person sharing their story. I know I said season two would be about people, you know, sharing their stories, giving their revelations, talking about different mental and physical issues and concerns that they're dealing with. But I had a bit of a, a revelation this weekend that I wanted to uh, share with you all. And it was something that was actually really close to my heart because I had the opportunity to celebrate the birthday of one of my very best friends who I haven't seen in more than five years. But while I was there visiting with her, my mother uh, called me. And when I was talking to my mom on the phone and I told her, you know, where I was and who I was with, uh, she was like, I'm so glad that you're not alone. And I was like, wow, you know, that isn't something that I want my parents, you know, or my friends or anyone to really worry about when, you know, it comes to me. But then I started thinking about it. I was like, there have to be a lot of people out there that are living by themselves that, you know, that live alone or they spend a lot of alone time even when they do, you know, live with other people. You know, there are people that will live in a home together and see each other maybe once a week, asked my nephew. <laughs> but anyway, if it, wait a minute, if you see him once a week, you might see him once a month. But however that goes, you spend a lot of time, you know, by yourself and, uh, and be it, by choice or by force, you are literally physically by yourself. Yes, I believe, you know, that God, you know, is with me. But at the same time, what happens, you know, when you do get to that moment and you realize that you are single, you are alone, you are, you know, in the proverbial sense of things by yourself. So this weekend, you know, really showed me a lot concerning that. Because I was with, you know, two couples, one couple that's been together, married for several years and another couple that's not married, but they've been together for a couple of years. You could see, you know, how they moved around each other, how they complimented each other in um, different ways. And it was so good and so refreshing to see. But then at the same time, here I am, I'm the odd person out, but I didn't feel that way. And it seemed like I was looking at the the great parts of each of the relationships because that's all I, I'm going to share. I'm not going to share, you know, anything negative or anything that might have been, you know, off cuff. But I just I just want to focus on the good things that I saw, the things that stirred my soul, the things that uh, gave me hope. So 
when talking to the couple that has been married, you know, for years, there was one thing that I saw that, you know, I was truly, you know, amazed by. They stood together 100%, you know, in solidarity. And I say that I could see that because we were talking about, you know, various businesses and things that people want to do and, you know, all these different things that was like, okay, well, what if I wanted to invest in that? Or what if I wanted to be a part of that? Then the wife's response was, if I don't feel, you know, right about it, then it's not going to happen. And, you know, in my little mind, at first I was sitting there thinking, man, you give up all that money, you know, just because you don't feel right about something. But then I thought about it. I said, you know what? They've been married for a long time. They move as a cohesive unit. So if she's not happy with something or if something is not going quite right and she sees it's affecting her husband, she don't want any part of it, which, you know, is amazing to me because so many people are chasing the dollar or they're chasing the fame and they're not looking at the impact that it's having on their significant other. That's why divorce rates are high. That's why you see so many separations or that's why you see, or especially like during COVID, you saw so many people, you know, get a divorce because they didn't realize how separate they actually were living until they were forced, you know, to live together. So back to them. The other thing that I noticed is they moved in such a way that say she was in the back cleaning, organizing, putting things together, making sure that, you know, everything ran smoothly for the surprise and all that. And the husband, he was like a, a five-star chef back there, you know, cooking and um, making sure that everyone had enough to eat. The food was delicious. And he even was like cleaning the kitchen too. And I'm sitting here going, what kind of sorcery is this? Because most guys that I know that's married that, you know, don't cook or whatever, they, they won't lift a finger to wash a dish, especially now that they cook first. And I didn't hear him complain not one time. I didn't hear her complain not one time. And they just knew how each other moved. I mean, it was... We were, we were out walking and we were in an area that's, you know, near, near several uh, different beaches and she knows his love for fishing. And when we got there, it's kind of like, you know, you let him kind of wander around, let him wander off. And then, you know, you look for him eventually kind of thing. But she just knew, oh yeah, he's going to be over there doing this. He's walking slow. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. And everything that she was saying, even though he wasn't in her eyesight, he was doing. And it's like, when you truly, truly love somebody, you know exactly how they move. You know what affects them. And you know, you know, what to expect. And when things are off kilter, you know that it either is something that's health related or there's something that's happened that they're trying to build up to be able to talk to you about. And you don't get that sort of thing, you know, overnight. So I was just sitting there listening to her talk and I was listening to him talk. And I was just like, man, you don't see, you know, a whole lot of this, not in this day and age. Now you see that from people who've been married, you know, 50 plus years, but those folks who've been married 20, 30 years, you know, you kind of, you kind of get to see it. You kind of don't get to see it, but it was like, they were each other's true soulmate, life partner. So then you got the other couple. The other couple, they hadn't been together, you know, as long. But you could tell that he was trying to be very attentive to, you know, what she needed because he knew she worked hard. He knew that, you know, she she never takes breaks. I know that because she's my one of my best friends. I, I always joke and I say that she has a motor on her back because she moves at 100 miles per hour in whatever direction it, that is required of her. If she doesn't know how to do something, she'll teach it to herself. And if it doesn't come out, you know, perfect the first time, she's going to keep going until that thing is perfect. Now, most guys that would probably drive them up the wall, they probably feel, you know, some type of way. Sure, he probably felt that way in the beginning, but now that he's learned that that's who she is, all he does is support her. And when she and I were doing, you know, these different events, 
I know, I remember times we were loading stuff up in my car. She loading stuff up in her car. And then I get home and I be washing all this stuff, putting all this stuff away. And both of us were exhausted when we get done because we didn't have, you know, help in that manner. And at the time I was married, I couldn't, I couldn't get him to do any of that stuff when the stuff got home. Sure, he'd help, you know, get some of the stuff out. But I mean, as far as the washing and putting the things away and organizing it and all that kind of stuff it was kind of like oh that's you and it's like wait a minute i can use some help this is a whole lot of stuff but it just fell on deaf ears but in this case she don't even have to say anything he loading the stuff up he's helping putting the stuff together if he sees something that he thinks that she can use that's related to this business oh it's showing up at the house like those humongous letters that people are using, um, say, at baby showers and things like that. He's getting all that stuff. And he's taking the time to see, you know, like when she's tired, like what, what can he do, you know, to help? And even if, you know, say he doesn't hit the mark every time, you could see that he was trying extremely hard. Like how many guys do you know? that would just reach out to a strange person just because you know that this is, you know, your significant other's friend and try to get them to come um, six hours away for a weekend to spend time with their friend. You know, that was like a shot in the dark to him because he didn't know, you know, what I had going on, what I was thinking about, none of that. But he kept expressing how much he loved her and how much he knew that she loved me. And it meant you know, the world to him to be able to get me there to spend time with her because of how hard, you know, she had been working over the past, you know, year or so. And I was just like, you know, that that's amazing. You don't find that as much either. And then I started thinking, I said, well, maybe you do. Maybe it's just me that I'm not, you know, seeing this sort of thing in the people that I meet. Because from some of the conversations, you know, that we were having, I could tell, you know, that he was very attentive and very, you know, curious about the things that made her happy. And he wore it on his sleeve. And sometimes when you wear things like that on your sleeve, you can get, you know, frustrated. You may yell, whatever. But I didn't see him like yell or anything like that, you know, while we were there. But you can tell that when people do, you know, let a lot of stuff build up, then that can't happen. Not saying that it does with them, but can happen. But then when I look at her, she has been so used to doing everything by herself or constantly having people attack her, come at her, trying to get, you know, the best of her because they see that she's a forward thinker. They see that she works hard and she's going to go out there and she's going to get that money. So people were constantly trying to jump on that gravy train and trying to get the best out of her and not walk beside her and try to be a partner with her. And I'm seeing this, you know, with this, with this guy that she's dating now, he is trying to be a partner with her. He's trying to help build. He's trying to help her grow. So, in all of this, I was sitting there thinking, I'm like, you know, when um, I do get in a relationship with someone, then those characteristics are things that would help me to get past this level of loneliness. Because I remember being married and feeling lonely because I didn't have a partner. I didn't have you know, the things that I saw that they had. And even in other relationships that I was in prior to getting married, it was always, you know, me going the extra mile and me giving or, you know, things of that nature. And I blame me because these are people that I chose to bring into my life. Was I perfect? No, not at all. Because, you know, some days I would just shut completely down, wouldn't talk about it and would just kind of, you know, move them to the side and they wouldn't even know what was going on, even though they know they did something, but they couldn't figure out what the thing was because I was consigning my heart just to let it go. And I protect my peace, you know, above anything. And that was something else that we were talking about. A lot of people lose themselves and other people and they lose their peace at the same time. I would rather be by myself than to lose my peace. If 
I am talking to you on the phone and you constantly disagreeing or you constantly telling me what I can't do or what you don't believe or, oh, you've never seen this happen or this isn't possible. I can't, I can't function like that. It does something to my heart. It does something to my mind. It says to me that there is something about us that doesn't mesh because I believe that any two that come together and God's in the midst, anything can happen. Anything is possible. And if you start out by speaking negativity, how can life also come out of there, right? You can't speak like negative and then positive because the power of life and death, you know, it lies in the tongue. So once you've said it, it's, it's out there, you know? So I, I need someone who is willing to, you know, water the flower instead of constantly digging, you know, in the soil to see what's there. Just, just, just fertilize it. Just, just add some water, just put some sunlight on it, help it grow. You know, then you think about those folks that were married and say they had the love of their lives for many, many, many years, and now they're widowed. So they're lonely in a different, you know, sense. Maybe they have kids, maybe they don't. But even if they have kids, there's still a void there. There's still something that's missing for those people. And with the holidays coming up, I just want everyone to be reminded that you are loved. You are not 100% alone. I know that because even though I was with those four people and I didn't have, you know, anyone on my arm or anyone to lean on or anyone to share, you know, funny moments with at that point in time, I mean, of, of the opposite sex that, that I would uh have enjoyed to have a time with. Um, I'm saying that there are people that love you. My friends, I know they love me because if, you know, they didn't love me, they wouldn't have invited me. They wouldn't have um, spent the time or taken the time to uh, have me around. And I have other friends in other parts of the country and I have family in other parts of the country that if I ever get to a point where my little tank is low and I need to, you know, spend some time with some people and end up, you know, getting my heart to grow, then, you know, I can do that. But there are some people that don't have that. And for those people that don't have that, one thing I could encourage you to do is go out and live your life. Don't just work and go home. And if you're at retirement age, don't just sit home and watch TV. Join something that you enjoy. If you like to play bingo, go play bingo. If you like to go for walks, join a walking club. Because the more time that you spend out with other people, the more time that you have to let your heart grow, to be free, to you know, to, to feel like you are alive. You, you want to do more than just exist and wait on your time to leave this earth. Because what good is that? What good is to have a purposeful, beautiful life with someone and then that person leave expectedly or unexpectedly and you die along with them? Don't die along with them. Do you think that's what they would want? Of course they wouldn't. They loved you with all their heart and all their soul when they were here with you. And they loved you until they had their last breath. And they hoped that you would not necessarily just jump out there and marry somebody else, but they wanted you to be loved again. They wanted you to be held again. They don't want you to struggle. They don't want, you know, you to go through any pain or any issues. They want to make sure that all is well, but that's something they can't control, something that they couldn't do. And I'm sure as they were taking their last breath, they had some regret in their heart that you couldn't come to, but weren't so selfish that they tried to take you with them because they knew that your purpose and your time isn't done here yet on this earth. So don't just go into your house and become a hermit. Do something that makes you feel alive, something that makes your heart leap, something that makes your heart grow. 
even if it's not, you know, dating a person, if it's, I don't know, teaching little kids how to do ballet or arts and crafts or something that's a lost art that we don't do anymore because technology has taken over. I'm sure those little kids would enjoy, you know, some type of arts and crafts or you could volunteer, you know, at a hospital or anything, whatever your heart desires. Just don't sit home. Sitting home, like I said, is just a way for you to sit there and wait until you die. You don't want to do that. You want to live your life in such a way that you are remembered for the goodness, the joy, the grace, everything that came with you, that you brought with you in your life. You want to make sure that all of that is still here, you know, when you're gone. So this episode is basically, you know, about loneliness and the relationships that I saw and how, you know, it made me feel. And I know I get on here and I talk about, you know, wanting to date and I've been meeting some, you know, interesting people, but I had to realize too that I can't just settle because I lose my peace in the process and I refuse to do that. That's like I said, that's something that is is not not going to be compromised. My peace will not be compromised. Um, anyone that is coming into your life should bring some joy and should take you up a level and not pain and bring you down a notch. That is not for you. If you are feeling, you know, any type of way in your heart, listen to your heart. Your heart is never going to lead you wrong, especially if you have a relationship with God, because that is where he resides. He's going to tell you whether or not, you know, you should fight, flight, or everything's going to be all right. So you really have to listen to your heart when it comes to bringing people in. And that's something that I am very protective of. And I have been, you know, single for quite some time now, you know, because of that. And yes, to be honest, there is someone that, you know, I am very interested in, but the things have to be, you know, right for both of us. It can't just happen just because I wanted to. So when you're out there thinking and you're out there moving and you want to get to know someone, make sure you have the things in your mind that you're looking for and your non-negotiables because sooner or later there's going to be someone that comes into your life and it's going to be up to you to decide whether or not you want to follow this path to loneliness or if you want to see what greatness is on the other side. Thank you so much for taking the time out today to listen to Embracing the Fight. Again, I am Erica Lamar, your digital creator and host. Have an absolutely amazing day.